Hi everyone, from me, Brent Graham, Thursday night, 9 o'clock, time for the Handicap Rugby Chat That Matters. Well, a little bit different tonight. There is a bit of rugby taking place this weekend, the NPC, but I must be honest, I'm not following that very closely because I'm absolutely gagging for the Rugby World Cup to get going, and I know most of you guys out there are as well. Well, we've got plenty to talk about tonight. We've got what I'd like to call the old firm here, one of them a regular guest who's uh, come on a lot over the last few years, and let's start with him. He's wearing a very interesting shirt there. Looks like all the World Cup teams on it. It's the Undertaker, Henrik Swart. Henrik, you must be absolutely looking forward to this World Cup, bearing in mind that you're going to be in France towards the latter stages. Oh, Brent, I can't wait. I, I've, I've been um, the excitement is building, and I, I'm getting into the mood. I, I've got the shirt. It's got all the teams on, all the badges of the teams. I got myself some box, um, socks here. I ordered my jersey, my World Cup box jersey. I'm still waiting for that. I've got the box, um, boxes here. Yeah, so, yeah, I'm really looking forward to the World Cup. I can't wait. Eh? I um, took my seven-year-old son this afternoon. I bought, bought him a box um, a shirt. So, yeah, we, we can't wait for the World Cup. And like you said, at the, I'm going over for the quarterfinals. So, yeah, it's, I'm very excited. And have been having a look at the betting. And, yeah, um, we'll get to that. But, yeah. Just for the rugby and also the betting, I can't wait for this World Cup. Well, Mark Dumphy called it then. He said, a blast from the past. It's the prodigal son returning. He hasn't been on the show for ages. He's got a preview up on Good for the Game as well. You can link to that down below. He's written that one for, for Boyle Sports. But it's Couch Critic. Couch, great to have you back on the show, man. It's going to be difficult for, for you to speak a bit of English, but I'm going to ask you to try. How's it, Brent? Thanks. I'll, I'll try my best. I was going to say, I think from the... The last time we were on the show together, I mean, because obviously lost 10Ks and I've put 10Ks on. So he's going in the right direction and me not. Excellent. Well, I can tell you what, thank goodness you can only see me from the chest up. That's what I'll tell you about putting weight on at the moment. But guys, loads to look forward to. Just welcoming all the guys in the live chat there. Alex, good to see from you. Alex messaging me this week. He's keen to come on a few shows during the World Cup as well. Just very quickly, as far as the handicap goes, I was looking at the schedule of games now. We've got a couple of Thursday nights where there will be matches. So we're probably going to move the main show to Friday about lunchtime. It also means we'll have all probably all of the markets and that for the weekend. So we'll do that. But we're going to look to do a few other shows as well. It won't just be the sort of main handicap show. We'll do some other previews. Uh, anybody else got any ideas they want us to do or anything like that, give us a shout. There's the Crow Tips saying, uh, good to see old Couch Critic there. Yes, it's great to have Couch back in the hot seat. But, gents, let's talk a little bit of Rugby World Cup betting. And, Couch, I'm going to start with yourself. You wrote that outright preview. But have you started really investing any money yet, or are you still really fishing for information, getting ready to make a big move? Brent, I'm, I'm, I'd like to steer clear of, you know, punting with the heart. So I, was, I wasn't listening to anyone on the box, and now I'm really kicking myself that I didn't get, get involved in the spring box a, a heck of a long time earlier. It's not uh, not just based on, on this past weekend's performance. I think that would, that would be foolish, but... Uh, it just all of a sudden seems to be to be clicking for the box in terms of if you just take a step back, you know, they've got an un, uncomplicated style. They seem to be in a good space now with a lot of guys coming back. I think that was the fear that, you know, your Peter Steff, the toys, Dwayne from Mielens, they weren't going to be at the same level that they were in, in the previous World Cup. And all of a sudden it just looks, I mean, Sia was back from injury and he's playing top rugby all of a sudden again. And, and it's just looking great. I mean, that back off forwards was... Uh, was showing the ground. It's almost like they were operating at 80 or 90, and all of a sudden we can see, you know, they've still got that 100% in them. So that's all good. Obviously, Polly is the only big concern for the box and the draw, but I suppose we'll, we'll have a chat about that still. But no, it's it's looking all systems go, and as, as you see from the preview, I think it's a, a France and South Africa to me. They, they're the guys who've got, got the boxes ticked, but it's, it'll be tough for the two of them to meet to meet in the final. Right, well, Henrik, before we start going through the individual teams, because I, I want to run through the sort of top teams individually, and then we'll look at some of the exotic markets. But, I mean, you've been singing the box praises all along. But, ironically, I know last week you thought, this is the last week I'm opposing the box. Like, you and me were kind of in the same position there. I, I, I actually got a bit lucky. I took that bet. It was a newsletter best bet, in fact, the Marnie Leboc over eight and a half points. I mean, I didn't expect to get there via five conversions, I can tell you. Um, so, so, yeah, that was pretty fortunate. But, Gee, the box performance last week, I mean, yes, it's a warm-up game, but you can see the way the New Zealand media are going on. It's really shaken things up, hasn't it? Yeah, Brent, I didn't see that coming. Um, I uh, I said I think the box will hold back, but yeah, they didn't really hold back there. Um, I don't think New Zealand held back either. Um, that was just a very good performance by the box. Um, I lost money. I, I was on New Zealand on the minus, 
<laughs> terrible bet. Um, and I was, I think I was overs on New Zealand points as well. Uh, all my bets lost on that game. Very impressive by the box. Um, and I don't, I, I, I watched the handicap, um, uh, not the handicap, we're on the, handicap the, the breakdown New Zealand, the New Zealand show where they, for 52 minutes they just moaned, 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 and moaned some more, moaned about the ref, moaned about how slow the game was, everything. And Jeff Wilson said, um, this is the best the box can play and uh, stuff like that. I, I I think the box didn't actually play at the best. They, they they stuffed a few tries up. They can play much better than that. Um, but yeah, it was great seeing France Malab is destroying their scrum. Um, I'm a big fan of France. He's my favorite player in the world. Um, and yeah, I really enjoyed the scrums. Um, the mall was good. Um, a guy like Kanan Moody coming. It's just... Young guys coming into the team, slotting in so smoothly. It's like they are coached so very well that anybody can come into the team. The, the game plan is so simple, but it's so tough to, to play against the box. So any, everybody knows exactly what they have to do. They come in, they do it like they should. You know, it's, it's, it's tough seeing anybody beating the box, in my opinion. Like you said, I've been strong in the box for a while. And that aside, just... At the moment, that that Wales game two weeks ago and this game now, obviously we'll see now what happens against Scotland. But you know, I, I I'm pretty confident that the box will beat Scotland and Ireland. And yeah, you know, I, I can I see the box going all the way. Right, just to answer a couple of questions in the live chat, Stefan. What where did I get that money bet? That was one of the sporting bet specials last week. So I got that over eight and a half points. I think it was priced at ten to eleven. I just saw Mark Dunphy there say I should do a competition on the show with a prize, a, spot, a trip to the Rugby World Cup final. So I'm not sure if I should read into that, that Mark Dunphy is, in fact, sponsoring that trip to the Rugby World Cup final, in which case I'd also like to say that I will be accompanying the winner to go, to go and watch the final in France. But we are going to have a competition tonight. In fact, um, it's just conditional upon me. I, I moved computers, so I don't have the... Uh, yes, I'll be able to do it now. Basically, we'll just do a lucky draw. Anybody who comments in the live chat, we're giving away a 500 Rand poker bet voucher tonight. Um, so anybody comments in the live chat, they will. We'll give that voucher. We'll do the draw away just before the end of the show. But let's let's get onto the onto the betting itself. And um, I'm going to start off. I'm looking at Boyle Sports here. We'll bring up their sites a little bit later for some of the exotics. But Henrik, let me start with you. Your New Zealand are 16 to five. That's just over three to one. Um, they were as short as five to two in places, and I think they may still be. Boyles have certainly pushed their their their, their odds out quite quite nicely. But hmm. New Zealand at 16 to 5, on the drift, you'd have to say, and I know that this probably goes without saying, but they're not getting any of your money in this World Cup. Yeah, Brent, um, New Zealand, they have improved the last year, um, and especially in the forwards. Um, and they are, like I said, they are off my naughty list, so I'm backing them again. I haven't been back, I've, like, opposed to them or not bet on their games for the last three years or so. But... They've definitely improved with Jason Ryan, but you know they've got to, they're going to have a tough quarterfinal. They're going to play probably going to play the box or Ireland, and Ireland have had the number for for a few years now. Um, they really struggle against Ireland, and earlier against the box in the rugby championship, they put us away in that first fifteen minutes. Um, so we did, that that didn't look quite good, but yeah, at that price print, you. Yep, you're probably getting getting the biggest price on New Zealand for a World Cup that there's ever been. So you, you, you're probably getting value on New Zealand, but I, got, I they're going to have a very tough quarterfinals. So for that reason, I'm not going to be able to back them. Yeah, no, fair enough. Catch yourself, New Zealand. What sort of dog did you describe them as in your in your preview? Can you remember? Yeah, I was a I was a border collier. You know, they've got some chicks and uh, everyone's favourite, but uh, I think they might lack a bit of bite. So I, th I think value wise, it's it's actually I don't think anyone is value in in pool A and B. It's it's just too you know you're going to be eliminating two guys. So that's why I've been a uh, you know a bit long time as they say on on backing the box. But you, you have to go for one of those four, and and that's that's where 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 I decided to put my chips. But Anyone in, in those four, it's almost the case of you got to decide in, in the other leg who's your favorite and, and try and back them some somewhere or another. That's that's my approach, apart from picking one one of the four. And obviously, then at pretty much three to one, you got to pick uh, pick out of those four. And, and then it's to me, it's between France and France and the box. 
Now, let's go on to France now. We've got France. Also, I'm pretty sure this is one of the bigger prices France available. I've seen generally three to one. And just to mention, if you don't have a Boyle Sports account yet, we'd appreciate you supporting us. There's a link down below, which will take you to either Couch's preview or my review of Boyle Sports. I had a look at their, their rugby betting. Or you could just go straight on to Good for the Game and click on the banner, but we would appreciate that support. France, 67 to 20. Couch, uh, yeah, I, I guess we, we said we've had a few guys on the show over the last few weeks. We've all ended up basically saying the same thing. Yeah, maybe like, you know, for example, here, yeah, not a bad price, but no one really wants to get too involved with that big quarterfinal looming. But uh, do you think at, at what sort, let me put it to you this way, if you wouldn't back France at this price, at what sort of price would they start tempting you? Well, I actually think it, if if you think they might slip up in that first game, then you then you're going to be able to pick them up at a at a great price. If you if you back them to get the quarterfinal job done against either either Ireland or or South Africa, then uh, you know maybe let them let them slip up against New Zealand, which might not happen. But that's probably your best shot. Obviously, you'd love a love a five to one about the French. And I think the big thing in everyone's mind is just you know, whether they've they've lost that inconsistency. Everyone has been saying this is a new French team. They've come, come through the system with this youth side and, and the coaching set up, but still, and, and you see in, in French derbies, you know, when they've got the home ground advantage, they, they're great. So it, it shouldn't be a case of them choking under the pressure of home ground advantage, but it's just the case of that consistency, being able to beat the best of the best uh, four weeks in a row and that they have to do with this draw. We, we all know they can beat anyone. I think... Um, I think maybe some of our Southern Hemisphere guys don't know the French as well. I think on their day and, and probably 60 to 70% of the time, they've got this perfect blend of rugby. You know, they can play exciting stuff. They've got skills all around. Even their forwards can carry and and so some, some some fancy things. But they still do the hard graft. You know, they can really get stuck in Paul Willemser and those guys are, are in your face. So they don't stand back for in that part. And that's why I think they've got New Zealand covered pretty much across the park and now it's just a case of them having that head space and knowing that they can do it on the day against anyone but i do feel the last little while they haven't quite been at the top and now it's just a case of you know was it was it planned that way or they're just trying to taper themselves into the event or have they lost a little bit of that that air of invincibility i think they've lost only two games in the last uh, 18 months or something like that or two years so they're obviously a great team and it's just a case of whether they're going to be able to peak now for the for this one yeah, I agree with your comments 100%. I mean, it also almost reminds me a little bit of Ireland in sort of 2018. They were at their absolute best, but by the time the World Cup rolled around, they just stepped off that bit. And France are reminding me a little bit of that, although they've shown patches of brilliance that make me think they can, well, they certainly could go all the way. So, Henrik, your opinion on France, and then I'd like your opinion on a bit of an exotic bet that I found. And my view is this. If France win the Rugby World Cup, I can hardly look past DuPont as the player of the of the, of the tournament. And I think I saw, and I can't remember where I saw it, and I'll look at Boyles, and I may have been with him. I'm sure I saw like seven to one to Pont to be player of the tournament. And my view is rather almost, okay, look, it could go horribly wrong, but take double the price France and back to Pont to, Pont to be player of the tournament. They may even lose the tournament and he could still get the award. So, yeah, what do you think of that one, Henrik? Yeah, Brent, um, if they go out, they're probably going to go out in the quarters like Farid uh, just commented there. Um, because if they get through their quarter, they're probably going to make the final. I can't see see them losing their semi-final then. Um, that, that's a decent price on France um, for a home World Cup for them. You've got to respect the home, the home um, field advantage they have, um, especially with their crowds. And you got to <laughs> remember the, the, the TV directors as well will be French, so you're going to have a few replays that, that suit them and stuff like that. Um, the refs will be influenced a bit um, by the crowd as well. So, yeah, that's a decent price in France. They're the only team that I'm worried about. I, I'm calling a France-South Africa final. I think France will beat New Zealand, even though they are dropping like flies. I see Jonathan Dante is out as well now for the first game. Um, I still think France will, will beat New Zealand in that first game and they will top the group and South Africa will top their group. So they will uh, meet in the final. They won't meet in the quarterfinals. Uh, you know, for me, going over for the quarterfinals, I won't mind uh, France South Africa game because I think that will be a brilliant game to watch. Um, but um, yeah, and then like you said, Antoine de Pont probably probably the best player uh, in the world at the moment. Um, is, is, but I think if you can put his pack under uh, pressure, he, you can find him out. Um, like against Australia, he, he was good, but. 
you, know, you, you spec really not well they, they weren't that great in the scrums but you got good ball and when he's got some space he's very good he's brilliant so you just have to put pressure on on, on his back and on him and then he's he's still good but he can't do that magical things that he does the other, other thing is thomas ramos um, probably the best goal kicker in the world at the moment he seldomly misses so I, i'd be looking at I, I know he's the favorite but i think a good bet for him to to be um, top point scorer as well um especially if, if they go to the final um it should, not not the best price i think it's around about three four to one day about um but yeah, that that's a plus for them as well. If they get into position and they get a penalty, he's going to slot it. So, so he's going to keep the scoreboard rolling. So yeah, that fringe the only team I'm worrying about um, for the box. Uh, I think that's a decent price. More than three, more than three to one on France at home. It's a good price. Right, well, Henrik, we'll stick with you then. You've already spoken about the box. We got them at eighteen five. Brent, Brent, can I yes, can I just quickly? Couch? Come in there, DuPont is in fact 11, 11 to 1 play of the tournament with, with Boyle Sport. Jeez, yeah, that's a big price. That's, that's a big, big price. Yeah, that's big. yeah, okay. Well, no more. In fact, ignore what Couch said there because I'd like to get my bet on before any of you <laughs> <laughs> jump on that one. Yeah, that is that is a that is a, a big price, that's for sure. Henrik, South Africa 18 to 5. Um, I mean, are you already quite involved on South Africa? I know you've liked them for a long time. Well, you're a bit like me these days. I can't afford to tie money up long term and wait for the tournament. What's your situation? Brent, I have one bet on the World Cup long term at this moment, and that is South Africa too. And I got them just under five to one about two weeks ago or a week ago, thereabouts. So yeah, I've got one bet. It's not not as big as as I would like um, on the box. So I'm gonna search for the best price, which is probably gonna be Boyle Sport, um, and I'm gonna. Put a put more money on South Africa, but yeah, yeah, like yeah, I'm not gonna. There's, <laughs> I don't have to go on about South Africa again. You, you've heard me about South Africa, so I like the box to win the tournament, and I'm definitely gonna put some more money on them. Right, we'll have a good look at the, we'll have a look at that to play the tournament later. There, um, when I when I bring up some of the exotic markets, um, Couch, we already know your position. We, uh, you know, you you put this in your preview. You do like the South Africans there, yes. Like you, I think anybody back in South Africa now will wish they'd rather got on at the five to one level where Henrik got on. But anything else to add on South Africa? Any anything that stands out in the exotic markets for them? No, Brent. I just think on on South Africa, the only interest I have is I usually like to do in in advance, as you say, you don't want to put down a, a big bet and tie it up. So I usually try a few few multis. So in in the lead up, like a couple of months in advance, I'll take. Uh, uh, you know, a cycle punt or something and then back it up with, with South Africa to win the comp. So I have a, a little bit of an interest there, but that's the way I try to build a build a bit of bank uh, going into the World Cup with, with someone I fancy. So I do have a little bit on South Africa, but as I said, it's about uh, you know, shopping around now and getting more interested. Then just on, on the South Africans, yeah, maybe, I don't know if you want to look at exotic specifically, but on the box, it's uh, JC Krula's top try scorer. Boils again, they've got uh, 30, 34 to one on on JC Krill to be top try scorer for the for the for South Africa and that's that's massive. I mean we know that South Africa don't go in with uh, outside center. Moody played one game now, but I mean that's that's uh, that's nothing nothing real. He, he might play the Romania game, but still if if JC plays all the other matches and and he gets an opportunity to add some some tries, you know, get yourself to four or five and and you're going to be a decent runner at that price. I think it's it's massive. As I said, no. No definite outside centre back up there, so so JC should get plenty of game time. Yeah, well, something you said offended Henrik, and he just uh, hopped off. Now I know Henrik has got load shedding at the moment, so his signal could be giving him a bit of pro problem. I'm pretty sure he'll be he'll be back soon. We'll go on to the next team on the list then, Couch, and it's Ireland, of course, also in that tough group with Scotland and South Africa. They've been very stable the last few months at five to one, and um, yeah, anything that appeals to you there in terms of maybe uh, the exotic markets for Ireland, even maybe a uh, an early exit for them. Have you had a look at anything there? No, I must say I don't think it's it's as cut and dry in in the pool there for the Scotland. Scotland have, have definitely got an opportunity to do something. You know, Ireland and Scotland know each other so well. It wouldn't be the biggest surprise for for Scotland to do something. I think it'll be very sad for Ireland. You know, it's probably the best position they've been in. Again, it's it's a bit of a luck of the jaw. You know, were they in the other other section, Ireland would have been shooting for the semi-finals and have a decent decent shot at at the final. 
and instead they they go and get this this uh, this group. I mean, we don't want to be uh, sarcastic and say that the box are definitely going to beat them and anything like that. But it's just a tougher pool to be in, a tougher pool to try and get out. You know, that quarterfinal looming for them, same as same as for South Africa, is a is a tough one. So it's you know you look at any price almost and you're a little bit scared. A, a year out, I was thinking Ireland are going to be tough to beat. You know, they went to New Zealand, got the job done there, and they've just got this. Uh, steeliness around them it's almost like uh, a little bit different to the french to me they're more conservative but they know when to turn it on and they've got a good defensive system and they solid up front and they know how to scrap i think that's the that's the big thing so you know they, they're going to take a, a team like uh, england and aussies they would have taken them down quite quite easily but obviously the big boys are going to be tougher so i can't really tell you what price i'd be able to take take island as i said it's just a tough side but five to one they definitely not again if if that's your pick out of the four you know you're getting a great price at, at five to one if if you think they're going to do the job yeah chris making the point there, there as well and i think it was joe coming in also saying no one really backing ireland at the moment which probably a year ago everybody was and i think it's a good point i mean ireland have really done very little wrong let's face it mm -hmm. um some of the other teams have just improved so yeah ireland big runners absolutely no doubt about it and uh, yeah, just I wouldn't back any of the teams in that side of the draw with any confidence at this stage. Uh, Johan saying if SA win the quarterfinal, he'll reckon they'll win the World Cup. And Farid saying if Box win, the Viking will be played the tournament. And New Zealand win, Ardi Sevilla. And Farid, that's very much along the lines what I'm going with with Dupont. I'm saying if France win, I believe Dupont will be. It's not guaranteed. There are one or two other players you could stick their hands up. Maybe the winger when it's something like that. But if France win, I reckon Dupont. So if you take 11 to 1 Dupont rather than the sort of Three to one France. That, that's kind of my logic there. Henrik, anything for you on the Irish? I mean, they did beat New Zealand last year, as, jo as mm. Joe says. I think for some reason they sort of calm, they've sort of like gone off the boil a little bit in all of our minds. But at the end of the day, this may actually be a case where they've just, they, they purposely not peaked too soon like they've done in other years. Yeah, Brent. Um, they are looking good. Um, they, they have a good game plan. But they also, like the box, they have a very predictable um, game plan, plan, in my opinion. Um, and I think the box can beat them. They, they can bully them up front. Um, so that, so they, they, they can be win against other sides, but they're going to have tr trouble against the box, in my opinion. Um, Ireland, the, the way the Irish are playing the, the last few years and at the moment, 5-1 to one is a great price on them. Um, but the five to one is probably because they are in such a tough pool, like I said. Um, but yeah, they've got a terrible record at the World Cup. They've never made the semi-finals, um, so you've got to take that into consideration as well. I, I like history, and I, I always look at history. So yeah, Irish not for me, um, but yeah, it is a good price on them. If, if you fancy them, yeah, you're getting a, a very good price on a pl team playing very good rugby at the moment. Just quickly. Um... Jason coming in. Where's the 11 to 1 for DuPont? That's at Boyle, South Africa. They have launched now, Jason. As I say, I appreciate if you do want to open an account there, go through the Good for the Game website and click on the banner just to support us. We would appreciate it. But yeah, they've got some really good rugby prices, which is why we're having a good look at them tonight. Right, that's Ireland. I'm not going to run through all of the teams from here on in. Well, we'll run through a couple. Australia, 13 to 1. Now, this is fascinating, Henrik, in the sense that you've got so far, we haven't spoken about a team from, from the other side of the draw, so to speak. So we've got Australia here. In theory, quite an easy run to the semi. Certainly, the way they've been playing, and the same thing will apply to England when we chat to them, there's probably no gifts for them in terms of getting to the semifinals. But 13 to 1, are there, are there, are, is there any value in that? Not necessarily am I saying, are they going to win? But do you think 13 to 1 is starting to get to the price where they should get some attention? No, Brent. I'd rather than look look at a smaller smaller uh, price to t take them to make the semi-finals, maybe. But but not they're not going to make the final. Um, so yeah, they, they if if they go deep into competition, so they're going to get beaten in the semi-finals. So rather take a, a bit of a smaller price on them to make the semis. Um, they're going to have to fight with Wales. Um, to go through because I, I, I'm pretty confident that Fiji will go through to the quarterfinals. Um, so yeah, it's between Australia and Wales then for the, may, maybe even one of them get the top spot, but one of those two going to get the third spot, most probably Wales. Um, so you, you'll probably have Australia and Fiji going through the quarterfinals. Um, but yeah, in, in, in the end they're going to have they, they have a pretty tough pool as well because Fiji are playing really good at the moment um, and Georgia. 
Don't throw away Georgia um, springing a surprise somewhere in that pool as well. Yeah, it's, it's, it, there is some tough stuff there. I look, I backed Australia. I've taken 12 to 1 Australia. They're not my main bet by any means, but I do see them making the semifinals. I, I, I'm not the biggest Eddie Jones fan in the world, but I actually think they've got the side to go pretty far. Let's see what Couch, <laughs> Couch is saying there. Couch, yeah, I think it was uh, Chris Rowe saying, can't believe you're tipping a, a centre's top try scorer and not a hooker. You, you've changed your ways. Oh, we'll, we'll get there, Chris. We'll get there. But just uh, um, Rian is uh, definitely in agreement with this one. We've actually had a, had a chat before. And I'm also taking 12 to 1, Brent, but I'm taking 12 to 1 stage of elimination. Australia being knocked out in the group stages. Um, uh, they're going to they're gonna lose to Fiji. They, they're pretty much going to battle past Wales. And the only thing I'm hoping is that Georgia don't chip up Fiji uh, after Fiji celebrate uh, winning winning two, two big games and, and then making it a tough one. But... 12, 12 to 1 Australia not to make it out there in a horrible spot. I, I don't know what you're seeing there, Brent. To me, it's, uh, I don't know, you can you can be uh, Robbie Deans, you, you, and he has been Robbie Deans before trying to help the Aussies, and it's it's no use at the moment. I mean, they've gone in with a, a squad that's got one fly-off, who's, I don't know, he's got 10 caps. I mean, it's it's ridiculous. I don't know what he's, I think he's literally trying to lower the bar this year so that he can, he can improve going going to the next World Cup or something. And and I think he didn't want big shots around. He wanted to have the team doing doing what he wants them to do. And now he's, he's, I saw the A team play and I thought, geez, that looks better than the, the best team the Aussies can put out. So to me, it's it's a no-go on Australia. They've got the easy side of the draw. They can make it all the way. The road's been paved and they've gone and got a, got a puncher. Okay, so I'm the only one who gives Australia even the faintest of hope. Talking of teams that are on the drift, I haven't seen a price this big. 16 to 1 England. I mean, they're generally around the 12 to 1 mark now. I mean, they've looked absolutely terrible. They seem to be in control early against Fiji, led 8 3 at the break, and were then comfortably, oh, I'd say quite comfortably beaten by Fiji. England at 16 to 1, this must surely be, be tempting someone, Couch. Uh, someone in Liverpool, maybe, but uh, that's that's pretty much that's that's pretty much it, Brent. I think again, there's not. I think the only team worse than 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 the Aussies at the moment are the English. That was absolutely rubbish that they've been playing the last last few games. So they've gone in with. It's actually, if you look at the names, it's a, it's a solid squad, but they, it's just unbelievable how their their levels have dropped. I actually think they should have gone the Aussie route and changed the, a lot of players because the guys just aren't there. I think the Saracens dip a couple of years ago and left those guys. Uh, cold and I don't know things just aren't on clicking at the moment so to me it's it's again it's such a pity that someone like Scotland isn't in this pool they would have they would have run over England I think and and definitely been a runner for a semi-final and it's just the case of whether Samoa has it in them to uh to chip them up I'm I'm backing there actually I haven't put it on any of the previews I think at this stage but I'm, I'm backing Argentina and otherwise but I'm backing Argentina to win the pool and uh, I got that at two to one it's now it's shortened quite a lot so that was my big play. I'm I'm really opposing England. Okay, hundred percent. Well, let, let's get uh, Henrik's uh, comment on England. You know, from far, Henrik, that almost looks like an England jersey you're wearing. <laughs> yeah, it's probably, is England? Um, or is the England oh, on this side? This side, yeah, there's the England <laughs> rose. Um, yeah, I agree with hundred percent with Couch on that one. Um, I also I'm pretty confident that Argentina will win that first game against England. Um, if I remember correctly, that opened up the handicap a few months ago, two months ago. So it opened up at, at nine, nine and a half. So so England, they were nine and a half points favorite. Pretty much choice now. And if you're get, still getting nine to ten on Argentina to win the game, it's a great price. But yeah, like I said, rather take Argentina to, to win the tournament, uh, to, to win the, 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 the pool and wait a few um few weeks longer if you have money that you can tie um um yeah you, you, you're gonna get 12 to 10 thereabouts probably for them to maybe if you're lucky 13 to 10 to win the group um yeah, almost I almost that, i see 14 and a half to 10 basically is it no 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 i'm, I'm no no it's not that high sorry my mistake um, yeah and, and and like i said samoa they're playing quite well at the moment as well and they've got a lot of experienced players players from um, from that that's played for the All Blacks and other teams. Um, they've got Tore, Tore Kefu, um coaching them. So they've got lots of World Cup experience as well, international rugby experience. Um, we in the past, they had players playing all over in Europe and then they come together to play for Samoa. 
Um, so they've got guys that have been in pressure, pressure um, situations in test matches, and that's in their favour. And Japan not not playing that well at the moment, but I think even Japan can can trouble England at the moment. So yeah, England they are in a world of trouble. Um, so yeah, I can see Japan struggling and not maybe not even making third place in this group. Right, so, oh, England, England, that's it. England, England, yeah, yeah. England. A little bit of doom and gloom for England there. Um, we, we'll we'll go on to Argentina. Brent, uh, Brent Ar just just mm -hmm. just on that quickly, I actually think uh, I, I might have been wrong, but I think there was about nine to one for uh, England England to be knocked out stage of eliminations in the group stages. So if Anik is uh, confident on on that one, then it's uh, it's it's probably a, a, a very good either long long look over at that. Eight to one, just over eight yeah. to one. Yeah, yeah. that's value. Over eight to one, yeah, that that's a pretty that's pretty decent. Um, yeah, so uh, I mean, we will also get into some of the other exotic markets now. I saw um, a, a question there with, about red cards and yellow cards. I think it was Peter Paul asking if we're going to have those. We will talk about those. But Henrik, let's talk about Argentina because as much as England have sort of got no one putting any money on them, a lot of people looking at Argentina and going, "Gee, these guys have got a chance." And I'll, I'll bring Couch in after I bring you in. But I, if I remember correctly, and just to prove that I read his preview. Um, I think he one of his bets was Argentina to to sort of make the final there or stage of elimination the final. What do you make of their chances? I know you like me are a big Michael Checker fan. Yeah, Brent. I also read um, Couch's preview yesterday, and I remember him um, having that as one of his bets. Um, Twenty nine to one on Argentina to win the World Cup is definitely value. Um, but I again, I'd look at them to make like Couch said, like, make the final. Or a safer bet to make the semi-finals um, because they're going to top top the group, um, and they're going to have an easier quarter-final. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty confident on on them making the semi-finals. Uh, and yeah, like I said, twenty-nine to one to win the World Cup is great value, but I don't really see them going all the way. They're going to get tripped up in the semi-finals or the final. So rather take them to make the semi-finals, I think that's a at, at the price you're getting, that's a very good bet, in my opinion. Right. I'll just have a look at the betting. Yeah. Argentina, uh, at stage of elimination, couch is what? Just under two to one, probably about 17 to 10 to be eliminated at semi final. I think you got about six or seven to one in the final. What are your thoughts on this Argentine side? Yeah, I actually think the one I, I preferred a little bit that just wasn't available at that stage was to to be the runners up, so to be the losing finalist. I, as as you guys said, I just don't I don't see them getting the job done in a you know two off winning winning a tight semi and and then winning a final. So I think that's probably about sixteen to one it's for 16, them to be yeah. yeah sixteen to one for them to be runners up. As Andrik said, obviously it's it's the much more safer one is is the semi-final but i'd like to just have a have a runner in there obviously if it's them against the box i'm still in a good position where where i want south africa in the, in the final so it's uh it's not too bad so i i like i like that one obviously for a month or whatever two months the the two to one is a, a little bit a little bit tighter but it's it's a good call i mean as again with the, anyone in that that pool in that section of the draw it's just it's you pay pay for success there you just need to to have a decent decent run and keep your heads on and i think argentina if i look at at everyone there and i just evaluate it was a case of i uh, as as of you brent i was like aussies geez they're gonna do it i actually had a long-term punt on them probably two years ago at 12 to 1 and i cashed it out i was just now oh, this isn't this is just gonna be a loser in any case so i left it and then i thought okay england if they could be decent and yeah we've seen that isn't the case so it's I've, I've settled on Argentina. They're, they're the ones, and as I said, if, it's such a pity. I would have been, I would have been in the same boat on Scotland if it was Scotland in, in that section. I think they're a team with a lot of confidence, playing good rugby. So it's, it's a pity for someone like them. But yeah, I'm backing Argentina, as you guys say. Uh, check out there, and again, you know, they, the poor man's France. When they get it right, they can play some beautiful stuff out out wide, and, and they got a good pack of forwards. So no, they they decent, a decent team, and the semi final is a good one. Right, before we get into the other exotics, Couch, I mean, I'm not going to go through the rest of the teams. We've got 39 to 1 Scotland, 43 to 1 Wales, Fiji 110. I mean, anything else you'd see value in terms of backing to make the final or anything like that? Or we pretty much, the teams we've discussed, we're not going to look beyond there for our winner. No, Brent, I don't think, I don't think for runners, you know, maybe someone will have the same thought 
as as I did on Argentina on on Wales to say, listen, Wales are going to make the semi final because they've also got the same plum jaw, or, or maybe you know some miracle they're going to make it into the final, and and that's going to be a good price as well. But the value one is is probably a little bit in the group stages. You know, it was halfway through that that England game they still had the betting up, and you could take Fiji to to win the pool at at a decent price. Don't ask me what it was, but. That's that's the kind of bets that maybe was was interesting, you know, a, a Fiji to top that pool, uh, as I said, or, uh, Australia to be eliminated. Those kind of things is probably probably where the where the value was in in terms of the group stages. But no, not not outright winning the competition. I'm I'm pretty much with Henrik there. I think it's it's between two or three teams at the end of the day. Right, Henrik. Anything else to add on the outright sort of markets before we move on to some of the exotics? Now, Brent, one other one that can maybe play out. Um, Fiji to pool to, to top their pool, um, pool C, um, and then Samoa to in second um, in in the pool pool B after Argentina, and then Fiji and Samoa get each other in the semi in the quarterfinals, and then one of them to make the, the semi finals. So if you fancy one of that, maybe Fiji to make the semi finals if if it can play out that way. I think that's that you, you can get some decent value on that as well. All right, yeah, some very interesting combinations. It's like we almost looking at two tournaments initially, groups A and B and group C and D, and see and how they're gonna pan out. Right, guys, I'm not expecting you to have had a lot of time to research this and to go into a lot of details. So I'll just sort of skim through you. But if you guys have have started looking at this, you can let me know. I see they've got under 350.5 tries. There's obviously been money for that. It's shortened to just under five to ten, and you've got over 355 and a half. We've got total tournament points at 2630.5, uh, yellow cards 59.5, red cards over 5.5. I know there was an early line of, I think, 3.5 or 4.5, and, and that obviously got gobbled up, but 7 to 10 over 5.5, and, and we've got things like total converted drop goals over or under 7.5. Henrik, have you had a chance to look at any of those type of markets yet? Anything that's appealing to you at this point? I have had a look, Brent. I had a look at these. Um, when... when um... Boil sport price is up. This was basically around about the prices. So I'm not sure whether it was priced up in Europe and there was money there and they got the prices from there. So the, the money hasn't been over here and at all. So it's strange, strange prices. Um, and you would have maybe liked the, the quote to, to change for it to be closer to a 9 to 10 or, or 17 to 20 or something, something yeah. like that. Um, there's 48 games, um, and if you take that um, that points, I, I worked it out two six three zero divided by 48. You're looking at around about 55 points um, per game, the average. Um, the previous tournament in in, in Japan, um, there was lots of humidity around, so the unders worked very well there. I'm not sure whether it's going to be the case here. I think we might have a, a few higher scoring games here. So I'm gonna, not going to take take a bet on. I think that 55 is very well set um, there. You obviously are going to have a few lower scoring games that have games early 40s and thereabouts defensive games. But if anything, I'd look at overs on that points um, because 55 and a half is well set in my opinion. But you're going to have a few higher scoring games. Price wise, um, the, the 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 price is terrible um, yes. on the over. On, on yeah, you'd rather, and I guess if they, if this was the opening line, they're yeah, probably going to move the line soon, Henry, yeah. because you'd rather have the line mm -hmm. move to like say three hundred and forty point five and get a get get like a nine to ten the pair there. Yeah, yeah. The, the other one I, I maybe like it's just also a terrible, not a terrible price. All right, but about seven to ten on over five point five red cards. Um, I can see there being like closer to ten red cards. So seven to ten, if you can maybe. Put it in a multiple with something else and get the price of 15 to 10 or something like that something you like um, because you should be able to put this in a multiple then that that isn't a, a bad bit and then somebody else posted this on the forum as well and and on the red cards and he posted about the, the drop goals i think the unders and the drop goals is also a good a good bet almost 8 to 10. um uh, yeah I, I can't see a lot of drop goals yeah, I must say I was a little bit surprised. I expected that line to be closer to sort of four and a half, mm. five and a half. Couch, um, looking at these markets, have you had a chance to look at them yet? 
No, I was, I was leaving it to the understaker to, to handle the points and, <laughs> and the tries there. I was actually surprised he's, he's not climbing into some some unders. But no, I saw on the on the forum as well. To me, it was uh, a pity we couldn't get involved in about a, a 9 to 10 on, on the red cards and um, and the drop goal. That's I mean, that, that's money for jam. I feel I don't think they're going to reach those levels. And it'll actually be interesting on the exotics. They don't often... Uh, allow a double but if you can hit the double on on the red cards and the drop goals i mean that's going to be a, a nice price already so i'm gonna i'm gonna attempt that one and and see whether it uh, it sticks to me as i said definitely i can't see the yellow cards i mean i was i was obviously ready to to get that going everyone i mean uh, Andre talked about the um the breakdown show and everyone's talking about the ref and the bunker and, and what have you so uh, and the eye hits and everything. So I'm pretty sure we're going to see a heck of a lot of yellows, but that does seem a, a bit of a high quote. But I might I might still have a dip there since the price is in, in our favor, you know, not not at the 9 to 10 line. So maybe have a little bit, because even if you, you say it's one yellow, I can almost, you can almost guarantee one yellow a game. I don't see a lot of games. Maybe the real Minos might, might do a, a zero yellow game, but the rest, and then you're definitely going to get a couple of games where you're going to get more than one per game. So... To me, uh, to me, the yellows might be a little bit one. I just got to, got to think about it a little bit. But the the reds and and the drop calls definitely stood out there. Yeah, I um, uh, mm -hmm. Couch. Um, I spoke to spoke to Gavin on Tuesday. We on WhatsApp we spoke a bit, and he were he, he told me that you should be able to take a multiple on these markets. So then the the overs on the red courts and the unders on the drop calls isn't a bad bet. If yeah, it'd be quite nice if you can get that that multi in. I think, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of one of those things. I also need to look at it. Yeah, I've, I've, I was wounded in the Six Nations because I went overs on cards. I thought the refs were really going to crack down. And I think the refs went out of their way in the Six Nations not to give cards. Uh, the warm-up games have been very different, though. So, yeah, I've got to give this one further thought before I get any more involved. Just to mention, we've got two Super Brew pools going with – well, the one is the good for the game free pool. We've got betting vouchers up, prizes there. They they have been confirmed and we'll have them up in the next uh, day or two. So that's free. And then the 7-1 bench split, and that's pay to play. 500 Rand gets you in to that. So if you are keen to play, we're hoping to get that pot up to somewhere close to the 50,000 mark. We'll see. We've got a lot of entries so far, um, but the, the proof of the pudding is, of course, if guys actually pay to play. But I think a lot of excitement building around that. Uh, Peter Paul just saying, yeah, he couldn't do the uh, exotics on. Obviously, he couldn't couldn't do the the multiples between them on 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 bet exchange. So yeah, it is quite rare to find that when you can do that one. Guys, I was thinking maybe next we go to something like the top try scorer market. Unless you want to highlight anything else in particular, I just want to. There's so many markets. It's actually quite yeah. I think this must be it. Yeah, uh, top tournament try scorer. We got Will Jordan trading his favorite there at, at just over eight. Well, just under nineteen to one. Uh, Damien Pano, he's 20 to 1. Uh, gee, there seem to be some big, big prices here, guys. What do you, uh, Couch, I'll start with you. What, what do you Pretty like? Tough. Do you like Jesse Field South Africa, for South African top try score at 34 to 1? I'd like to see what his price is for top try score in the world. Yeah, he's, he's probably, he's probably, I think, uh, I don't know, maybe Gavin was involved with pricing the try scorers. He's got me hook, line, and sinker. It's uh, it's try scorers all day long for me. I mean, uh, Chris was there. I know I've backed Jesse Grill to be South Africa's top try scorer, but it's just, uh, that was just a price punt. To me, I've got uh, Bongi Mbanambe at 75 to 1 to be the top tournament try scorer now. The big thing you got to know is, is that no matter how much I love my hookers, the, the the wingers have been the top try scorers and I think pretty much every World Cup. So it's it's definitely, I said he's like history. So the history definitely isn't in favor of a, of a hooker getting the job done. But I've, I've said in my, my column, the next one coming on the exotics, it's just, you know, there are a few factors to keep in mind. And I think squad selection is a big one. And again, um, with the centers, I say JC Krul should get plenty of game time because we don't really have alternative 13. The same thing with the hookers. Our hookers are going to be rotating. I think maybe against Germania, we'll have Dion Furi covering on bench and, and one of them starting. And I have a feeling it'll be Bongi starting there and probably being the captain since he's been going into the leadership role. And I think Marx has wrestled the starting berth away. So we're going to see a lot of Bongi on the bench for the big games. But it doesn't really bother me in terms of try scorer because he can still come on and get the try at the end and, and that kind of thing. So hopefully he'll pick up a couple here and there. And if he can get the start against Romania and, and pick up a hat-check, then all of a sudden you've got a you've got a heck of a runner there. But definitely wingers and 
to me. Uh, again, the other aspect, of course, is the game time because you want to play against the minnow, and that's a problem with a Will Jordan and those kind of guys at the top of the boards, the Ches and Colby. They're probably going to be rested against the the smaller guys. But just uh, sorry, I don't want to bore you guys too much. But uh, France and New Zealand have two two more minnow teams to me, so they're going to put bigger scores on there. So that's where I'd be looking for for try scorers because they could could rack up quite a quite a lot there in, in those games against Namibia and Uruguay. So it could be could be free flowing. So I still think Damien Pinot at twenty to one, Brent. It's it's a decent price, you know. Hopefully he gets a start against one of those two, and then he's going to start all the other games. And France should get deep. So twenty to one is a is a tasty price. Yeah, I have to agree with you. In fact, Henrik, I'd have to say um, the, all of those prices look pretty pretty good. I was sort of expecting one or two guys in single figures, but not not the case at all. Yeah, just before Henrik mm -hmm. goes up, what's his? How do you pronounce his name? Noah Konatowasi. Mark, someone put that on the forum at fifty six. I jumped all over it, and it went out to fifty eight to one. I mean, that's typical. I recall. <laughs> Setting the, setting the prices, yeah. Um, Gavin, what do you think? I mean, sorry, Henrik, what do you think? There's some good prices there, man. Yeah, Brent. Um, I, I remember I'm calling him Namakwa. Um, it's just easy as <laughs> as <it's> African <laughs> call him Namakwa. Um, yeah, he, he's playing. He, he's he's a nippy player, and he just goes over the advantage line the whole time. Um, Brent, this is not my market. I, I don't like try scorer mar top try scorer markets. Um, I'm terrible at it. I can never. I, I pick guys and they are never close to any runners. You you probably have to, um, like you, I said as well, and you, you have to look at who's going to play against the, the Mino teams and and especially and the teams they're going to rest. Uh, they're going to play the the, this, the the guy who's probably on the bench, um, the the winger that's on the bench for the main games. Um, a guy like Lester Fanger, Nuku. Um, if Rico Iwana, if you if you you knew he's going to start against the the lower teams, then you can take him as well because he likes scoring tries. Um, but he's probably not going. So I'm not sure he's going to start an outside centre for the All Blacks in in the the lesser game against the lesser teams. Um, I like a guy like like Kubis Reinach to, to be a South African top um, try scorer because he he's going to start. Um, against the Romania and, and Tonga and those teams, and he likes scoring tries. Um, obviously, the hookers, like like um, Heinz said, the set pieces, the malls are so important these days. You have to go for the hookers. But if you're looking at wingers and and, and out, um, yeah, outside backs, you you you're gonna have to look at the guys playing against the lesser teams. But I kind of like Kubis Reinach to be top South African um, try scorer. But like I said, I'm terrible at these markets. Yeah, I'm going to have a good good look at these markets. We'll probably do another couple of videos on them because I really enjoy them. Um, but yeah, you try and figure out exactly how what are teams thinking and you know who's going to play against the minnow sides and all of that sort of stuff. And certainly, I don't know that Fijian winger who played number 14 on the weekend against England. He missed a very soft tackle early. But after that, I was hell of impressed with him. And someone like that, you could see running in quite a few tries as well. And a, and a good point as well, Brent, on, on someone like Fiji is they they unlikely to really rest the players. You know, they still got to play yes. their very best against Georgia. They, they're they going to be playing. It's it's probably just, just one game that they might consider just uh, arresting someone. So that's that's a good... Uh, a good idea. The the only one I want to throw in there, because I'll I'll leave you to it this this week to do your research. But is uh, Vunivalu for for Australia? I know you've got old Mark Namakwa there, but um, Vunivalu <laughs> is, is is pretty much 50-50 to start becoming the the first choice winger there. I think he had a decent decent outing this past weekend, so he could steal the starting berth. And even if he doesn't, if he starts in the in in the lesser games, then then he's gonna get get a real shout. I mean, he's eleven to one to be Australia's top try scorer, and as a winger. You know that's 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 a runner to me, and if they exit in the group stages, as I think they have a shot of doing, then if you play the mono games, you are probably going to be the the leading try scorer there if, if you're a winger. So it's between one one of two guys. So I really I really like that play. Brent, yeah, that's, that's, just, that's an interesting one. Sorry, sorry yeah. one other thing. Um, I've I've got a strange theory on wingers. Um, I like left wingers to to be top try score or to score more tries than 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 the right winger. Um, I've always had this this theory from like I was at school. Guys pause. Most guys pause better to their left from their right, and so you you um, get get better pauses and to finish the try stuff like that. And also, if you go for the cross kick, 
uh, the, the right kicker would, would kick better to the left. So I always like the left wingers for that one. Andrik, uh, can, can you guess the, the last three top top try scorers out of the last three three World Cups? Probably going to be right wingers. <laughs> it's, no, no, actually your theory is, is two out of three there. It's Chris, Chris, Chris Ashton, Julian Sevilla and Josh Adams. So it okay. is uh, two, two left wingers, yeah. Okay. Alex is making the point these are really good prices. I hope hope uh, these prices last because I'm hoping the show has a bit of longevity to it. When people log on on Saturday and the, the, the prices have all halved, they're not going to be they're not going to be too impressed. Uh, Vudavula just craps his Farid. Yeah, I was, <laughs> I, was, I was I was under that impression as well. But I can tell nice you, here's team. a tactic Australia going to use up and unders into the twenty into the behind the dead ball line where he just has to catch it and and drop to the ground. I can see because there was that one move they tried on the week on the weekend where where Gordon they weren't under penalty advantage. It was a bit of a strange move. He cross kicked, Vanivola went up and he he kind of got it and he it looked like a planned move to me that there was a guy running. So he drew the two defenders, and he he was meant to tap it to the guy running around the outside, and it went wrong. The pass went wrong on that. But I think Australia have got a plan with that guy and they're going to use it a lot and uh, they're going to win the World Cup. No, I'm only kidding. But no. I think they are going to I think they are going to they're going to use some plans there. But let's move on to tournament top point scorer then. Henrik, uh, who were you saying earlier? Were you saying, uh, was it you or Couch saying Ramos? Ramos. Ramos, yeah, I like Ramos. Because he, he kicks very well. He's probably the best goal kicker in the world at the moment. He, his percentages and everything says that. So, And if you fancy France um, to go deep, uh, get through their quarterfinal, they're playing at home. And... Again, against um, France this on su- Sunday in the world, the, the warm up game, they take every opportunity they get to take the points. They take the points, they go for the three points. So, he's a great option for he. This is the reason why he's a favorite, but it's still a g- good price, yeah. No, fair, fair enough. In fact, all these look, these prices are good. I'm definitely loading up on my boil sports uh, account after this. I hadn't seen these prices yet. I'm like gagging, I'm almost going to end the show now just so I can start betting. <laughs> It's absolutely crazy, but we'll see. I'm I'm pretty certain some of these prices are going to shorten, but hopefully they'll still they'll still keep some of the big prices up. Uh, Couch, what, what you got for us? I mean, I know you guys are not looking at Australia, but I'm looking at Carter Gordon going. Okay, the guy kicked terribly on the weekend, but like Marnie Lebok, he is allowed an off day every now and again. He's come back. I, I don't. They've only got the, really the one flight. I don't see him playing every game, but I'm saying yeah, twenty to one seems. I was willing to take ten to one on him, and and, he, and he's twenty to one. Catch what you got for us. Yeah, if you like Aussie, then I mean that's that's a cracker. I'm uh, obviously in the Argentinian camp, so that leaves me with Bofelli. I mean, uh, Andrik has said Ramos is a is a is a sharpshooter. Bofelli isn't too far behind. He he knocks him over, and he's got a long range as well. So uh, I like Bofelli at at that price as well. Yeah, I think it's ten point five. So. It's it's a good one to me, but yeah, Ramos definitely. Again, it's it's just that little chick on the four favorites where you know you could be out in a quarter and and that's that's a bugger up of these kind of uh, players. You know, top try scorer, top point scorer. You need him to be in the in the top uh, top four so he can at least play in that third playoff as well. He said, "Well, Bitsy's come in with a couple of UFC bets. Is that next weekend's one? Because um, yeah, I've been writing a few UFC previews. So I may even recognize a few of those names." Right, guys. Well, we, got, we talked about plenty. There's certainly some good value there on the on the Boils website. And as, as I said, please lo- log on to Good for the Game first and click on the banner to show them that we're sending some business their way. Well, I'm not so sure they're going to be happy about the business we're sending their way. It might be. Great, the there's there's the one more for me on the uh, yes. on the top uh, on the play of the tournament. You had uh, Dupont. I'll 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 see your Dupont and and I'm gonna raise you Sia Kulisi. Sia Kulisi twenty to one play of the tournament. He's walking on water at the moment. Yeah. He's uh, yeah. you can't switch on the TV without seeing his face if you watch for uh, watch it for an hour. I think he's he's playing incredible rugby uh, since coming back from in, uh, injury. He's an inspirational leader. I just think if if the box. Uh, do the job and, and get the trophy. We said uh, South Africa just on a 4-1, to one, but you can get Siakulisi 20-1. to one. I mean, uh, it might be a shift between uh, Moni Lebok and Pollard at 10. Uh, maybe someone like Katsoff and, and Marx could, could get in the running. Peter Steff the toy, obviously. But to me, uh, Siakulisi, I think you could do worse. Uh, I agree. I in agreement with me on that Carter Gordon one. What do you think of Siakulisi, Henrik? Brent, like you know, I'm not a fan of Sia I don't like the guy, but he is 
he, he's probably the most marketable guy in the world. Everybody, he, he's on every, he, he is marketing, ever is marketing him, and he's on every billboard. He's ever, my kids love him. The way I like him, they love him. The kids at my boys' school, everybody, they are crazy about him. And if the box go all the way, like I said, he, he's got to have a chance um, because yeah, he's, He's just uh, like a poster boy for World Rugby at the moment, like the pawn. So, yeah, 20 to 1, that's a great price on him as well, I think. Yeah, it certainly is. I think any team that wins the tournament's always got a good chance, certainly winning of making the final, of getting their their play in there. Um, yeah, so plenty of exotic markets for, for for us to consider, guys. I'm just laughing that guys definitely don't think Carter Gordon's a good pick there, 20 to 1 to be top drive scorer. Alex says he, he can't even kick. Come on, guys. Eddie knows what he's doing. Carter Gordon's going to come good in this World Cup. I can tell you guys that. But anyway, gents, any other exotic markets you want to bring up then before we before we may, maybe decide on our best bets and we all log off and load our Boyle Sports accounts? <laughs> no, nothing for me. I, I think I'll, 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 still, I'll still leave uh, one or two for the preview there, Brent. Excellent. But of the stuff that we discussed tonight, then, if you had to pick one bet, it doesn't have to be the... Most likely to win, but let's just say the best value. Henrik, what do you what do you think? Argentina to make the semi sprint or Argentina to to top the group. I think you're getting more than even money on Argentina to top the group. I think you're getting a great great value, great bet. Um, it's obviously you have to wait um, about what's it five weeks or so, five to six weeks. But it's great. Um, I think it's a great bet, even though it's not a big price. Um, yeah either one of those to Argentina top the group or to make the semis right I'm just I'm on another computer and I, I want to do that draw thing and I haven't been able to do it yet I know while, while I'm while I'm searching for that share your your best bet with us please yeah Brent I think uh, Argentina to top the pool especially if if you took it a little bit earlier that that two to one that would have been a, a nice one now probably as Andrew says to 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 make the semis that's just the runner to me in in that pool and then uh, maybe have a look out at South Africa and France to be to be the finalists. Uh, I don't think we had a look at that, but that could be a nice a nice price as well. I think that's that's a a good final. Obviously, the the quarters is an issue in that group, but to me, it's still a nice value play. Sia Kulisi, man of the tournament, twenty to one. Right, excellent. Well, guys, we're going to do the draw. Anybody who made a comment is eligible. We're giving away a five hundred rand poker bet voucher. There, I've been playing quite a lot of poker. On poker bet with uh, I keep building up a nice kitty and then doing something stupid and losing it all, but uh, going quite well. This I'm going to do this draw. We've got 18 entries into the draw. If you do win this, just email me Brent at goodforthegame.co.za to win your prize. Let's have a look here. Ooh, nearly Hendrix. What? Mark Dunphy. Mark, Mark Dunphy. Dunphy. <laughs> I know he's Irish based, so he probably can't bet it. So, Mark, if you wanted to claim it, you're more than welcome to. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a game and let's see mm. if we can get a, a South African guy uh, to do it. And 2M Systems. I know 2M Systems from South Africa. 2M Systems, I don't know if you've got a poker bet account, but uh, send me an email, Brent, at goodforthegame.co.za and I'll organize your 500 buck voucher for you there. First of all, to the guys in the live chat, thanks very much. We had a lot of activity tonight. I was, I think I'm going to have to get a producer for the show, you know, because I'm bouncing around between the live chat, trying to do all of the stuff. It's a little bit crazy. And then to my two guests, Couch, great to have you back on the, the show and look forward to working with you on a few things over the World Cup. It's going to be great. Cheers, Brian. Awesome. Good being back. Excellent. I know you, you can't let the boys down. When it comes to match previews, there's got to be a hooker or two in there. Eh? Definitely <laughs> will be. Bongi all the way. <laughs> Excellent. And Henrik, Great chatting to you, man. We'll also be talking to you a lot over the World Cup, I'm sure. But, yeah, uh, go and load that Boils account and, and start placing some bets. Thanks, Brent. Yeah, um, thanks for having me. And, yeah, good luck to all the guys. It's going to be a great World Cup, rugby-wise and betting-wise. It's going to be lots of opportunities. And, yeah, get on early. Brent, uh, Brent, I think um, I think Andre just needs to make sure he shares his international number with us so we can just get weather updates from the quarterfinals, eh? Oh, exactly. Yes, we definitely want that. <laughs> yeah. no, I'll, I'll, I'll have a WhatsApp running so you, you can WhatsApp me. 
Excellent. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks, everyone. Remember that as of next week, we'll probably be moving to Friday. We're also going to have a couple of other shows next week. So keep an eye on the Good for the Game website and on our Twitter feeds and that for all the latest details. As 2M Systems, our winner says, good luck, guys. Let's hit those bookies hard.